Hi YouTube, it's Jobin. Got a knife review for you today, and it's not an easy one. In fact, this is, I think, my third time trying to film it and uh, explain my opinion in a coherent manner that doesn't take like 15 plus minutes. And the knife I'm reviewing today is the Spyderco Navaja. I was lucky enough to get into the Blade Forums pass around to this, which is cool. Got to check it out just for the price of shipping it to the next guy, basically. So that's really nice. Spyderco provided the knife. Now I've played with it, used it a bit for a week, and still not entirely sure what my opinion is. On one hand, it's a great knife in many ways, but I think it has a lot of small problems. But first, let's talk about the good stuff. The quality of the fit and finish on this knife is really pretty amazing. The best I've seen so far from Spyderco, um, among the best I've ever seen on any knife, uh, Spyderco generally does pretty good, but they're generally not perfect. Uh, there's there's often um, spots around like the uh, on the liners around the perimeter of the handle that aren't quite polished smoothly or evenly, but on this one they did a really great job. In fact, I'm pretty certain this is a backspacer here, a separate piece, and I can't find the lines where it joint where it's mated to the liners. Um, I, it looks like one piece of metal, but I'm fairly certain it's liner, backspace or liner. So that's really very impressive. I do like the blade. I think it looks awesome and is quite practical. It has a pretty acute point while having an extreme amount of belly. That's very cool and a fair amount of straight edge. And at about three and a half inches of cutting edge, it's a nice practical size. The stainless steel bolsters and carbon fiber handles look very nice. And we do have four-way adjustable pocket clip, left and right side, tip up and tip down. And the knife does open very, very smoothly and very fast. Uh, but already, you may have noticed a problem. If you know about this knife, it's supposed to have a caraca mechanism, uh, which is basically a little ratchet that's supposed to make a clicking noise as the knife opens and closes. That is broken. Again. This broke for the first guy in the pass around, and I'm guy number five or six, and it was broken when it got to me. And it had already been sent back to Spyderco and repaired once. I do not think the handle is comfortable or well designed at all. I don't know if it's that these depressions here and here are too deep or if it bows out too far here, but in the majority of grips, when I'm just holding the knife in a simple manner like this, I get a significant hot spot across my two middle fingers. It's quite uncomfortable. I think if I had to use this for a long period for work, I'd probably get blisters. And I've, I've never had this issue uh, with any other knife before. I've had knives with handles I thought were less comfortable, but I've never had one with hot spots this significant. That's obviously a your mileage may vary type thing. Maybe it'll fit your hand great, but it really doesn't fit mine at all. And that's something fairly unusual in my experience for higher end knives in general and Spyderco in particular. Now, some of the really puzzling design decisions about this knife is it looks like it's supposed to offer a lot of different grip possibilities, but many of them aren't really practical. Um, I've this is probably my best bet for comfort and security, but you end up with a lot of space between start your finger and the start of the cutting edge. And if you want to put your thumb on the thumb ramp, it's extended up very far. 
So it's actually a little more comfortable to have it back here. It's a little weird. Now, you can move up a little bit. And that's not, and that's okay comfort wise, but it is not a very secure grip. Um, however, it would offer some degree of control. What really doesn't work is if you try to go forward further still on this really oversized choil, it just gets more uncomfortable and less practical. I'm really not sure what that's even for. It looks big enough for two fingers, but if you put two fingers in there, your, knife, your grip on the knife gets really ridiculous. You're basically like pinching it between a couple fingers like this. And you know, the, the, this is not a secure, powerful cutting grip. I wouldn't even say it offers a great deal of control. I'm, I'm just completely puzzled by this large choil here. I've mentioned I really like the blade. However, this shoulder here um, does hamper some types of cutting tasks, or perhaps I should say piercing tasks, because if you're piercing into a material, the blade goes in and it stops. You can push harder, but why, why put that there? I, I don't get it. It baffles me. Another very major complaint I had with the knife at first, and this is one of the ones I did, um, this doesn't bother me as much anymore. The grip problems uh, still bother me, but this is a more minor annoyance, and that is how hard the liner lock is to get to. Normally to disengage a liner lock, I, and I think most people, go in sort of with the tip of our thumb and push. That's kind of hard to do on this one. You can do it, but it's uncomfortable. It kind of stings the end of your thumb, pulls the skin kind of awkwardly, and it requires quite a bit of pressure, and it's not very fast. You can get around this mostly by altering the way you disengage the lock. Putting your thumb, like, across it, so it's up against the side, and squeeze a little bit, and push your thumb that way. And just your thumb sliding past the lock will disengage enough to let the blade start to drop. So that's not a huge deal. I got used to that fairly quick. But again, even something as simple as a liner lock on this knife, I feel it really could have been designed better. Okay, now let's uh, take a look at something interesting I noticed about how the various grips affect the angle the blade is held at. And also, we're going to look at some comparisons with the Kara Kara 2, which is a very similarly sized and proportioned knife, despite being in a completely different price bracket. Okay, so we hold the Navaja in the most comfortable grip for the knife, and we imagine, you know, just for the sake of getting a, a solid frame of reference, that we're going to do some cutting on a cutting board. So we're holding the knife like this, and we're doing our slicing, and that's actually kind of cool. The uh, belly of the blade will be the thing that contacts the cutting surface. So that's fine. But let's say we want a little finer control, so we choke up a bit on it. And I don't know if you caught that if you weren't paying attention or looking for it, but the blade just tilted upward. So it just changed our angle of engagement with the cutting material. I don't know if that's bad. I don't know if that's good. I really haven't um, used this extensively enough to decide, but it is a little weird. And it gets even more pronounced if you choke up all the way. At that point, with my wrist still in the same position, the tip is now pointing literally upward. Uh, this is very different from my other Spyderco knives, uh, the ones that are designed to be used in multiple, multiple grips, like here's my Manix 2. If you choke up, your fingers just move closer to the cutting edge and the angle the knife is at doesn't change at all uh, relative to your wrist, hand, table, whatever. Uh, much the same with the Kara Kara 2 here. Now interesting size comparison with the Navaja is in fact to the Kara Kara 2 and by extension to the Endura. They have very different blade styles, and the handles are in a somewhat different style. However, the overall proportions, length, cutting edge length, uh, ratio of handle to blade, and even weight are very similar.
Here we see they both have approximately three and a half inches of cutting edge, four inches of blade, and long handles. However, as I mentioned, I think many of the grips on the Navaja are impractical, uh, whereas something with the Kara, like the Karakara with a, a grip that's a little bit more straight um, offers more true versatility in my opinion. I've never had a knife before where I had this kind of love-hate relationship with it. On one hand, it's really awesome, you know, and it cuts well, it's beautifully made, um, but the Karaka mechanism breaks, the handle ergonomics are bizarre, the liner lock is inconvenient, and this weird shoulder up here inhibits penetration. <laughs> you know, it's not something I can go, two thumbs up, you need one. So, yeah, there's that. You know, if it looks cool to you, I'm not going to say don't buy it. Go ahead, just uh, keep in mind if, you know, you're like me and the handle starts to drive you insane, you may find yourself selling it. So, there you guys go. Hope you enjoyed the video, and you have a nice day.